It was just like the shape of this dome. I told my mum what we were going to do, and I said, is there anything you'd like me to put in with Lucy's bones? And she gave me these two old toys of Lucy's that she'd always kept, that we played with as children, completely beaten up old, old straw-stuffed lion that was called Chocker, and another one that was called Bunny, who was dressed up in his smart velvet trousers. And we put Chocker and Bunny in either side of her skull and wrapped it all up, you know, it was like, tucking up what was left. It really helped to make it real. I'd been away from the West House for about a month. Um, and then on December the 6th, I was hitchhiking back from Tewkesbury again in exactly the same spot that they'd picked me up what, five weeks earlier? When they pulled up, they were both sat in the front and Rose um, opened the window, the passenger side, and was all smiling. And um, then she said, uh, oh, I'm Carol, I'm so you. glad to see you. I'm really sorry about what happened. No. Um, and then Fred leaned across and he was all smiling. He said, I'm really sorry, Karen. didn't mean to upset you like that. I was only joking. And then they were, like, talking and saying, oh, the kids have really missed you and we really missed you. And I kind of felt like... Even though I didn't want to get in the car, I kind of felt like they were being so nice that I had to. Come on. OK, thanks. Can you sit in the back, Fred? Have a chat with Carolyn. About two miles into that journey, Fred looked at me in the rearview mirror and asked me if I'd had um, sex. And I just had this feeling come up in my stomach and felt sick, and I thought, oh, here we go again. Check it and see check and see if she, she's had sex. And with that, she grabbed my crutch. Fred pulled up on the grass verge and turned around in his seat and just kept punching me across the side of the head. And I, I was knocked out. When I came through, they'd um, tied my hands behind my back with my scarf, um, and they were wrapping, like, parcel tape all, all around my head. They were telling me, if you just calm down, we're just going to make you a cup of tea, tidy your back up, and then we're going to take you home. And they did do that. They, they sat me down and they, they, they took the tape off me um, and did my hands and gave me a cup of tea, gave me a cigarette to try and calm me down. And I did then think, oh, this is OK, they've just made a mistake. Uh, they think I'm something I'm not and I'm going to go home. Um, and a few minutes later, after we'd finished a cup of tea, uh, Rose grabbed hold of me and tried to kiss me on the mouth. These are people, the Wests, probably got more joy, more satisfaction, more fulfilment out of what they did, these poor girls, than anything else in their entire existence. And the fact that they did it together heightened the value and the pleasure to them. Fred was mostly watching. And then it progressed a bit further. Um, and then they were both interfering with me. Um, and discussing my gen genitals, and Fred was saying that there was something abnormal about my genitals, but not to worry, because he could put that right. If you look at what happened to her, you see the antecedents, you see the, uh, the script, if you like, for many of the things that were to come later and to be enacted with the victims who were murdered most terribly. And so they decide to stop and right we'll calm you back down now we're going to take you home soon get me another cup of tea take my gag out while I have this cup of tea and then and a cigarette and then it starts again the Wests used her for their immediate sexual gratification that was important to them they they raped her they dominated her they controlled her but remember even at this stage they were not in a hurry they didn't expect to uh, 
kill her necessarily, but neither did they expect her to be gone from them very soon. One of their weaknesses, one of their areas of um, being blinkered, is not really to understand that other people really are sentient, active people. And that means if they can get away, they will. If they can oppose, they will. And so I tried to show out. Rose put a pillow over my head and smothered me. <laughs> First I was kind of kind of struggling with it and then I thought, no, just, just go with it. You know, you kind of give up. And it's just so easy to just let it go, just go off to sleep and that's it, it's over with. Fred came back and pulled the pillow off me and that's when they um, ripped me up by my neck and that's when they threatened to kill me. Um, they said, and they were, I had both these faces offering over me. Um, and they said, um, we we're gonna keep you in the cellar and we we're gonna let our black friends use you. And when they finished with you, we we're gonna kill you. And we we're gonna bury you under this paving stones of Gloucester. And he, he added that, you know, there are, there are hundreds of girls buried there, the police haven't found them, and they're not going to find you. Caroline was not alone. Evidence found with the remains of the West's victims suggested they'd been through something similar before their lives had been ended. We found one knife. It couldn't have been the knife that dismembered them because it was a long bread knife type, which was a bit round-ended. It couldn't be used for that. And the other things, of course, were uh, bondage materials, I suppose you'd call them. They were sort of masks of sticky tape. Get her up. Stuff you tape on parcels wrapped around the head. And some plastic tubes which had been pushed up nostrils. Pretty bizarre stuff. Remember, if you look at what happened to these young women, you see a progression of, of debasement, of mutilation. You see uh, physical mutilation. All of these things are much more enjoyable when they can be repeated in discussion, in shared memory after the event. And this would be an area where Rosemary for Frederick West would be absolutely vital. She had enormous value to him. In 1972, Caroline Roberts was raped, abducted, and nearly murdered by Fred and Rosemary West. They spared Caroline after she promised to stay silent about her ordeal. She slipped away at the first opportunity and went to the police. Still traumatized, Caroline was unable to face a rape trial, so the police charged the Wests with indecent assault. Fred and Rose were released with a £100 fine. I think the most shocking aspect of the West case is that it ever got to being um, a set of serial killers plying their trade. Everything that we know about the Wests was evident in that first case that went before the magistrates all those years ago. Instead of serving a prison term for rape, the Wests were free to murder Linda Goff, Lucy Partington and Carol Ann Cooper before the year was out. From Caroline's statement, it was clear to the police that Fred and Rose were in it together. She's a perfect mother. Fred had been lying to protect Rose, who was still protesting her innocence. Now under arrest, Rose was summoned to the magistrate's court where she would be charged jointly with Fred for nine counts of murder. In court, Rose would be reunited with her husband. On each occasion, she snubbed him, uh, looked away from him, didn't accept his attempt at touching her or advances. And this clearly quite perturbed him. Rejected and dismayed, Fred wrote Rose a letter. Well, Rose, it's your birthday. You'll be 41. It's still beautiful, it's still lovely. On New Year's Day, around one o'clock. We'll always be in love. 
most wonderful thing in the world was when I met you. West using parts cut from prison blanket and making a very neat snake-like rolled rope, which he very neatly blanket stitched. I haven't got you a present.